Habalai wa femu ina. Mbala msi zako. Mjiba leji na jamutu msi zake engalo. Akade keko. Uluna kuruwa kusotu. E sawa ziba muenda. Paka sawa kumi. Tuba tugusebu mbali. Okulaba nti. Tuwa ya muko. Anaba izi wa fe. Haba sini yeyo. Yeyo mkaga. Pozi naba sini yeyo kutami. So I would like to very first welcome all my viewers uh, to today's show where we are going to be discussing uh, physics with the A-level candidates. Section is uh, section B of uh, heat. Uh, the topic is uh, calorimetry and the thermometry, but I've started with thermometry, of course. And last week, as I mentioned, that uh, I'm going to do uh, the topic in such a manner that even the senior fives who are new to the subject, who had just been introduced to it uh, for less than four weeks uh, prior to the beginning of their first term, before all this happened, can jump along and then continue uh, with their normal learning so that they get to enjoy and not stay uh, so much idle and feel like as if they are left out. So last week I introduced thermometry and I talked about uh, the thermometric property I went on and gave the examples of the types of thermometers that I'll be doing and then uh, their corresponding thermometric properties. I talked about the characteristics of a uh, good thermometric property and then I moved on and talked about the scales of temperature which is the thermodynamic scale and then also the siliceous scale. I mentioned that the Celsius scale measures the temperatures in degrees centigrade, and then the thermodynamic scale uh, measures the temperature uh, in Kelvin. So after the, uh, after the scales of temperature, I went on and then uh, explained how we can establish these scales of temperature. But I mentioned that establishing the scales of temperature we base on the fixed points. I defined a fixed point and I cited the three examples which we shall be talking about uh, in this section, particularly at this level. That is the upper fixed point, the lower fixed point, and then also the triple fixed point. Indeed, if people are following me, then they can remember that in the process for establishing the scale of temperature uh, using the Celsius scale, I was uh, drilling much on the upper fixed point and then the lower fixed point in terms of calibrating or in terms of uh, trying to establish the fundamental interval. However, when it came to the thermodynamic scale, uh, for the seditious scale, uh, you will forgive me, but uh, it is my habit and indeed professional for us to always have uh, this review it is not uh, just wasting time, but probably if there are any people out there who have just joined us today, uh, maybe this will be their first lesson because last week they were told by a group of their colleagues that also now uh, the senior fives have something that they can come and pick up uh, from scratch. That's why I'm doing this review. So I talked about the Salisha scale. And I defined the unknown temperature on the Celsius scale as the thermometric property at that unknown temperature, thermometric property at the lower fixed point, thermometric property at the upper fixed point, uh, minus the thermometric property at the lower fixed point, uh, multiplied by 100, and then in degrees, uh, Celsius. Uh, this one I call the fundamental interval, which is the difference between the thermometric property value at the upper fixed point and that at the lower fixed point. I mentioned that these ones we have talked about in all level uh, during, uh, uh, during uh, the calibration of the liquid in glass thermometer. However, uh, the most common books that we have involve the equation of theta being x out of y times 100. But when you go back and you review what we do in all level, uh, the x theta minus x naught is uh, what represents the value of x, which is the length of the liquid column at the unknown temperature, and then uh, the x100 minus x0 is what represents the length y, which is usually the difference between uh, the liquid column at the lower fixed point 
and then also the liquid column at the upper fixed point. So these ones we have also seen uh, in Oliver. Uh, maybe this one, the thermodynamic scale. I define the unknown temperature here as uh, the thermometric property value at the unknown temperature. I uh, remember using capital T. Let me stick to what I used last time. And then divided by the thermometric property value at the triple point, uh, multiplied with uh, the thermometric property, uh, sorry, uh, the temperature 273.16 Kelvin. Now, at this level, I would also like to introduce to you the conversion of uh, uh, the relationship between the temperature at sorry at the temperature in uh, degrees celsius i want to use that abbreviation uh, to the temperature on the kelvin scale is that a theta in degrees Celsius is a theta a plus 273.16 in Kelvin. So that is why here, when I'm on the thermodynamic scale, I'm using uh, the value of 273.16 Kelvin uh, being a representation of the interval at the triple point of water. I indeed described and uh, gave an explanation on what we call the upper fixed point and the lower fixed point, and then also the triple point of water. I gave the definitions to those. Now, uh, for those of you who would like to go back and catch up with all the episodes of our show, Somera Mudirorio, I must remind you, uh, because over time I keep getting emails on people who are wondering how can they access the content that we have done previously. Uh, the page is uh, BBS Telefina. Uh, I hope I don't know if my producer can uh, can help us walk through that process because sometimes I don't know how, but you, you direct people through the email in terms of words, and then they seem uh, to not get the process. But if my producer can uh, can work with me uh, during this process, maybe it can also help. Otherwise, you're supposed to go and then search. Uh, for BBS uh, in your Facebook app, those who are using the phone or the tablet. Uh, if you're using the computer or the laptop, uh, still you go to uh, the website www.facebook.com. Uh, I know we are all aware that uh, in order for you to access anything off this platform of Facebook, then you must be a registered user. So if you're not registered, uh, it is very simple. You can sign up, you create an account with Facebook, after that, you go to the search pane uh, of Facebook. Like all the other apps, also Facebook has a search pane. Uh, you type in the keyword BBS, Telefina. I know people uh, sometimes go there searching for BBS TV, but ours is uh, BBS Telefina Eafe. But I'm very sure BBS Telefina is enough. Uh, already they will be bringing you results. Then when you reach to the BBS page, uh, you may not be in position to access all the videos or all the content that is being posted on the page, unless if you've liked the page. So the first step after reaching the page, you make sure that you like it. Uh, when you like the page, you can then go on and check in the video section, uh, because there is a video section. Uh, thank you very much, my producer. So this is, uh, if so far you've reached our page, uh, BBS Telefine and you've indeed liked it. Uh, the like button, I'm going to beg my producer to show people the like button, that one with a, with a thumb, uh, with an okay thumb. Of course, uh, my producer has already liked it, so that's why it is having liked. If you have not yet liked the page, of course, it will be asking you to like it, so it will be having a, a statement like. So after liking it, you then go to the uh, video section. Uh, when you go to the video section, you're going to find a lot of videos there. Yeah, the video section. 
the moment you open the video section, there are very many videos. However, uh, the production team at uh, BBS has also gone on and simplified the process for you, whereby they've created a playlist specifically named Somera Mudiruryo. So if you reach on the video section, under the video category, there is a playlist still, specifically for all the videos that contain the content of uh, Somera Mudiruryo, all the programs that we've done. There are over uh, 200 videos, I guess, that you will find there. So it is as simple as that. I hope that uh, the next time uh, people are trying to inquire about how they can get the videos, I've tried to do a great job in, uh, as far as directing you is concerned. Uh, maybe the videos are not categorized, but you can look out for all the videos of P7 content, Senior 4 content, and of course the Senior 6 content. Kindly uh, do that, and then make sure that you make good use of uh, all the content that is present there. Uh, on YouTube, you can still do the same thing. Uh, you search for BBS Telefina, only that uh, we apologize. Sometimes the videos may not be uploaded uh, within time on YouTube, but nevertheless, you, you still find them there. At least you will find some there. But if you don't find some there, then just run back to your Facebook. So moving on. Salisha scale, thermodynamic scale, upper fixed point, uh, lower fixed point, and then also the triple point of water. Uh, this is where I had left it, I guess, last time. Uh, maybe I was, uh, I also talked about the discrepancies or the variations in the temperature readings uh, by the different thermometers. And I indeed gave a reason why the two thermometers of different thermometric properties may fail to agree in terms of reading a certain temperature. But at the same time, we saw that uh, these thermometers will agree for certain temperatures which are close and at the fixed point. So the variations will be for those temperatures which are away from the fixed points. And uh, indeed, I gave a reason why. Now, today, I would like to go on and try and uh, discuss the different thermometers. Because I talked about the types of thermometers, but... Uh, Today, I want to start explaining how we use the different thermometers in order to determine the temperatures, because that is also a common question for us. In other words, I want to be giving a set of procedures that are usually followed when we're operating these thermometers. I want to start with the liquid in glass thermometer, then I'll move on to the constant volume gas thermometer, do the platinum resistant thermometer, and then the thermocouple, and then finally end with the pyrometers, where I'll first of all dissect the optical pyrometer and then the total radiation. However, with that outline, uh, people who enjoy reading from Tom Duncan, Roger Moncaster, Neil Con third edition, and make good use of all the other resources that are available online, you can follow it and then try and read ahead. So today I'm doing uh, the thermometers in detail. I want to beg my producer uh, to give me that document which I've prepared that has the liquid in glass thermometer. I want to start with the liquid in glass thermometer. Uh, also, people who, uh, people who are interested in the learning material that I'm using uh, during this lesson, I have it in uh, form of a PDF. Uh, kindly reach me on my email, uh, lutaken at gmail.com. Uh, but very soon, we shall be launching a platform where you will be in position to also get all of this content. So my producer is going to help me uh, uh, bring that to your screen. Thank you very much. Uh, what you see is uh, are the steps that are taken when establishing a certain unknown temperature using the liquid in glass thermometer. So the thermometric property used in this case is the length of the liquid column. But of course, uh, when you read from different books, some people will say that the thermometric property involved is the volume uh, of, the, of the liquid inside the glass tube. But since we assume that the liquid in glass thermometer is constructed with the uniform cross-sectional area, or the capillary tube is of uniform cross-sectional area, then when it comes to dividing those volumes, somehow the areas will cancel out because they will be the same. And then it will leave us with the lengths because volume is length times cross-sectional area. So the thermometric property is the length of the liquid column. What do we do first? 
uh, the most common type of this thermometer, the liquid evolved is mercury. This is the thermometer which we saw in all level. I'm going to draw a sketch diagram just to refresh people's memories. But this is the thermometer which we see in the lab, the one that we're always using. However, sometimes the liquid involved is also alcohol. And I mentioned that uh, depending on what you have in your lab, but the quickest way of identifying whether it is a mature in glass thermometer or an alcohol based thermometer, the alcohol is usually reddish in color that we use. Uh, by alcohol, we're not referring to alcohol that is common to us, waraj or whiskey. No. We're just uh, saying that that liquid uh, could be a compound which belongs to that family of hydrocarbons known as the alcohols. So many times people are asking, uh, why, isn't it, why isn't it that it is uh, in the normal form, in the normal color, uh, colorless, water-like? If it is a mercury in glass thermometer, the way we identify it is that the liquid is silverish, of course, the mercury color. So what do we do? Number one, we're going to establish the length of the mercury column at the unknown temperature. How? By getting the thermometer and placing it in contact with a substance whose temperature is to be determined. We shall then note down that length as L theta. The next step, we are going to establish the length of the mercury column at zero degrees C. How? We are going to get the bulb of the liquid in glass thermometer and then immerse it in an ice mixture. So you can imagine we have uh, lumps of dry ice somewhere and then we insert the thermometer. We're going to record that length as L0. Uh, this thermometer that I'm talking about is uncalibrated. Uh, leave alone the picture which we have of the one that we use in the lab that is already calibrated. Uh, but this one is uncalibrated. So we are then also going to establish the length of the mercury column at steam point. How? By lowering the bulb into boiling water. Of course, not inside the water, but uh, above the space of the boiling water where steam is collecting. So that steam can fully surround the bulb. And then we shall record that length as L100. Using the definition which I've started by writing on the blackboard, which was general to all the thermometric properties, we are then going to establish or determine the unknown temperature theta are using the thermometric property value, which is the length at the unknown temperature, which we recorded as L theta minus L naught, which was the length of the mercury column at zero degrees C, and then divided by L100 minus L naught times 100 degrees C. I've, I've, I've tried to give uh, a, a greater detail uh, to what I, what, what I wrote down uh, in my document. I hope that people are following me and they are trying to write all of this down. Uh, plus, I want to remind those people who have just joined us that uh, because of time, whatever projections you have to make on your TV may not be there for that long. So if you have a smartphone, kindly take a pic of it and then you save it uh, for later use. But most importantly, make sure that you are following in and trying to listen carefully as you're noting down uh, the most important points that you deem necessary. So the, the type of thermometer that I'm talking about is this. I'm just going to draw it. But I know that people know this. Uh, this is the bulb. Uh, so this is the liquid thread, which can either be mercury or alcohol. Uh, this is my capillary tube, a glass tube. So I, I dip, I, I, I bring the bulb in contact with the, for example, it could be a liquid, which I want to determine the temperature. So what I'll do, I'll just bring this and insert it inside the what? The liquid. And then after some time, when the length of the thread has become constant, I'll come and read that length. I'll measure it. I record that as L theta. Then I'll transfer this into a container having lumps of dry ice. Fully surround this with ice. 
Again, I'll come and then record that as uh, L naught. Uh, it started with L theta, uh, L naught. Then I'll transfer this to uh, a hypsometer, usually. That is what we use for this case. Uh, the hypsometer, I hope that people still remember that from all level. That gadget which helps us determine uh, the upper fixed point of water. Why the hypsometer? It is going to give us steam under standard atmospheric conditions. Because on it, we have a manometer which controls uh, the pressure inside it. I know that uh, people remember uh, that diagram. I'm not going to draw that though. So we also record this. And then the unknown temperature theta we get as uh, L theta minus L naught divided by L100 minus L naught multiplied with 100 degrees C. Now this is if I choose to establish the unknown temperature on the siliceous scale. However, if I wish to establish the unknown temperature on the thermodynamic scale using the liquid in glass thermometer, then what will I do? Now this is what I'm going to write down. I'm determining That unknown temperature using a liquid in glass thermometer on the Kelvin scale. Uh, some people will call it the Kelvin scale, others the thermodynamic scale. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it all means the same. So step one, what we're going to do is insert the bulb of the thermometer into the liquid whose temperature, uh, comma capital T, is required. Second step, uh, measure and record the length. Let me add this word, the constant length of the liquid column, uh, comma L T. Uh, step two. Uh, then insert the bulb into an ice water mixture and record uh, the constant length uh, L T R the liquid column. And then lastly, uh, calculate the unknown temperature of the liquid and comma. Capital T is L T divided by L at TR times 273.16 Kelvin. So you realize that what I'm doing is again walking through the other steps, which were for the general thermometric properties. Only that this time now I'm trying to explain it uh, in line with the liquid in glass thermometer. But the set of procedures still remain the same. Now, there are very many questions which arise uh, from the liquid in glass thermometer. Number one, why is it that most of these thermometers uh, use mercury and not alcohol? That is the first question.
why is much really preferred uh, to alcohol? as a thermometric liquid. Uh, this sometimes they can say what are the advantages of mercury over alcohol. Now number one, we know that mercury is opaque. And that is why I think that uh, when we are using uh, the alcohol in this type of uh, thermometer, we don't go for the other alcohol which we know. Uh, the one which is uh, colorless. Reason being, it will be very, very difficult for us to take a reading uh, using uh, that type of thermometric liquid. And indeed, I mentioned that in the lab, the, the alcohol uh, thermometer, the liquid which is inside, the alcohol which is inside is colored. Uh, it is usually reddish, uh, if memory serves me right. And I know that uh, many of us have uh, tried to use this uh, during uh, the physics and the chemistry practicals, even biology. So the first thing we know, this one from olive and primary, that mercury is opaque. Uh, therefore, it is easy to take a reading with it. Number two, uh, because of its uh, uh, cohesion properties, the cohesive forces being greater than the adhesive forces, mercury does not wet the glass. Therefore, it is more accurate that when I take a reading with, the, uh, with mercury as a liquid in the thermometer, uh, that reading will be more accurate. Why? Because I'm very sure that all the mercury will be expanding at a uniform rate and then also contracting at a uniform rate, leaving none of it sticking at the glasses, uh, con therefore not contributing to any errors in terms of the length that we are reading. If we have a liquid which wets the glass, then the, the, the tiny droplets which may stay clinging on certain parts of the thermometer will be sources of errors in terms of reading the temperature. Why? Those droplets, if combined and then brought back uh, uh, to, to, to this other pool, to the general pool, they will be contributing to a certain length. In fact, they may cause the length to change by a certain value and therefore causing the temperature to be a different reading. So because mercury does not uh, give us such false, uh, forms of errors. That's why it's also preferred. Mature does not wet the glass. Now, I've also talked about uh, its uh, uh, expansion and conductivity. It is a good conductor. Mature is a better conductor of heat compared to alcohol. And what does that mean? It means that for it, it will be able uh, to quickly detect temperature changes because its conductivity is high compared to the alcohol. So, now, as much as as much as uh, we are saying that uh, alcohol has all those advantages and many others, uh, which I'm going to leave for you uh, to try and find out, it is also true that mercury has got some disadvantages. For example, uh, it is not very sensitive to low temperatures. Uh, I do not have the specific value of head, but we know that uh, mercury has got a lower uh, melting point or freezing point compared to alcohol. I mean, alcohols are known for having a very high, uh, very high melting point. Uh, sorry, for having a, a very low melting point, alcohols. Remember, melting points are usually values which are in negatives. So when I use the word high, I'm referring to the magnitude minus the negative sign. Or we can use the word uh, low, uh, putting into consideration the negative, because the bigger the negative, then the lower the value. Uh, but again, be careful, depending on uh, the book that you're reading and how have they phrased the statement. Make sure that you get the, uh, you, get, you pick the point. But what we're trying to say is that uh, I want to give you a very simple observation. I know it may not be common, 
uh, to most of us, depending on uh, our backgrounds. But people who come from families where there are some consumers of alcohol, you may discover that the hard liquor, uh, the whiskeys, the gins, uh, the tequilas, those ones they never bother to keep in the fridge. Why? Because most of them exist in uh, high percentages of alcohol, 40% and above. That percentage of alcohol, putting it in the fridge, in our domestic fridge, uh, which gives us temperatures of up to minus 5 degrees C, you're wasting time. You remove it even for the next 20 hours when it is still at the same temperature. When its temperature has changed slightly, you cannot even feel that uh, the thing has, has become cold. It cannot freeze. It can never freeze. Because this freezing point is very low. We are talking of minus 350 something. Uh, you, you can look up the correct figures uh, offline. But because of that, that's an advantage of alcohol over mercury. It is a disadvantage to mercury, but now that is the advantage of alcohol over mercury. That if I wish to use the alcohol in a glass thermometer to measure very low temperatures, I will succeed. That I can read minus 200 degrees C using an alcohol-based thermometer. But I may not be in position to read the minus 300 degrees C using the mercury in glass thermometer. Uh, you must forgive me, I do not have... Uh, uh, the freezing points uh, in my document here, and uh, I do not want to pick up uh, the rough values off my head, but we, next time at least I'll, I'll come back with them. So that I explain this in terms of the specific freezing points. What we're saying is that for certain temperatures, the mercury will freeze, solidify. Why? Because it has, a, it has already hit freezing point. Yet the alcohol will still survive it will still give us a contraction which will lead us to get a certain temperature reading. So that is a disadvantage of mercury, but an advantage over alcohol. Number two, mercury is expensive compared to alcohol. Alcohol is cheap to purchase, but uh, the expense on mercury is also there uh, because mercury is not as, uh, as cheap as alcohol. So that is also an advantage in its way. And many others, as uh, you will look them up, I know that people have... Uh, done this at the ordinary level. So my assignment for you is going to, number one, you're going to go back and write down the advantages of alcohol over mercury. Uh, number two, uh, give me the advantages of this type of thermometer. Because we all know that this thermometer is portable, uh, it, is, uh, it is easy to use. I mean, it's just a matter of inserting the bulb uh, inside the liquid or at a particular point where you want to take the unknown temperature. Uh, somehow, it can also be used to measure the temperature at a point, but it also does not have, uh, it may not give that much accurate values. Uh, you, you will also discover that uh, when you're trying to look at the advantages and disadvantages of this type of thermometer. In fact, uh, let me also give that. I hope that people are noting this. Now. This is information which we shall get uh, from uh, our reference books. And then also, you can also find it online. Uh, it's there. I'm going to give uh, disadvantages. Uh, you must understand that I'm trying to incorporate all the teaching methods. Uh, and uh, discovery learning is one of them, or research. So that's why I'm leaving you uh, this little piece of work. It's not that. What are the sources of inaccuracies? Inaccuracies are 
I promise that next week when I when I'm coming back in my review, I'll be uh, sharing with you the solutions that the various people are going to send me to look at. Ah, Inaccuracies and their sources in this type of thermometer. So, uh, that is it that we need to know about the liquid in glass thermometer. But uh, these ones, you will find. I know people will succeed on finding that. Now, I want to move on and talk about a new type of thermometer. This one probably it's not so uh, common to many of us. And that is the constant volume gas thermometer. I'm going to beg my producer uh, to bring up that image of it and also the, uh, the notes which I try to prepare for this. Now, that is what we have. Uh, it is the constant volume gas thermometer. That is how it looks like. I want to also beg my producer to, to get a better image of uh, Google, uh, a more practical one, uh, in order for my learners to look at. However, I also ask that uh, people out there, you should make good use of the internet. It has all these things up and running. So uh, that is the image of the constant volume gas thermometer. Uh, my producer kindly uh, bring that piece of work. Uh, bring it on the viewer's screen so that I discuss it uh, when they are looking at it. It has a bulb, and then on the bulb, uh, there is a capillary tube attached to it, connecting to this other side, uh, which looks like a manometer. So it has a fixed rubber tubing. That rubber tubing is very, very important. Remember, our questions of physics are usually with the aid of a labeled diagram. So when you're labeling that part, the fixed rubber tube, um, be very careful. Mention that it is either made of rubber or some people will name it the flexible tube. Because in my mode of operation, I want to mention that we shall be playing with it, adjusting it. How? Either raising the left arm of the manometer or lowering it. If that is not flexible or if it is not made out of rubber, by the way, the rubber that we're talking about is uh, the hose pipe in the, in the actual diagram. That is a hose pipe. If it is not flexible, then the procedure that you're talking about, adjusting it by lowering it or raising it, may not be possible. Because you also have uh, glass tubes which are in the same design. So you have to communicate to the examiner on that part that that is a rubber tube or a flexible tube. Now, on the other side, we have uh, a glass bulb containing a gas. It can be air, but in this particular case, they used helium. They filled it with helium. Uh, then we also have the constant volume mark or what we call the reference mark. In the, uh, I think it is in the left arm of the manometer, that point which is uh, marked the reference mark. Now, how does this operate? Step one, we get our bulb, we then immerse it in an ice water mixture. When we, I, when we immerse it in the ice water mixture, we shall give it some time. Time is allowed for the gas inside the bulb to come to the temperature of the bath. Remember, this is glass. Uh, we, give, we, we give room for conductivity. Heat from outside to come and penetrate the glass and then be felt by the gas inside the bulb. The open tube is then moved either upwards or downwards. Now, that's a step which I was saying. Moved either upwards or downwards such that the level of mercury in the closed tube reaches the reference mark. When that is obtained, the difference, the difference in the levels of mercury in the right limb and also the left limb are measured on the graduated scale. Now, that high difference is recorded as H0, the difference in the mercury levels. I mean, which levels? Mercury at the constant volume gas mark and then also the mercury in the other limb, the difference in those. I thought I would dodge drawing this and save time, uh -huh, but I think... Let me try and sketch it very well so that people uh, 
uh, can see what I'm trying to explain. Because now I'm, I'm talking of a uh, difference in the mercury. Uh, people may not get it very well. This is all filled with mercury. It's a manometer of a kind. And then up here, we have the atmospheric pressure, which I'm going to represent uh, with uh, capital H. So besides it, we have a meter rule, or a graduated, meters, uh, a graduated, uh, a graduated scale uh, reading length. But this is a meter rule in practice. So this is what we're saying. After this has been immersed in an ice water mixture, and then it has the gas inside has obtained uh, the temperature of the mixture, which is usually zero degrees C. It means that either the pressure here is going to push the mercury beyond the constant volume mark. This is the constant volume mark, or the atmospheric pressure here will be greater than the pressure due to the gas such that it will push the mercury beyond the constant volume gas mark. If the gas temperature is greater than the atmospheric pressure, then we expect the mercury in the left limb to fall below the constant volume mark because this is where the gas pressure will be exerted, the pressure of the gas. And this is the pressure at a particular temperature at this point. So if it is greater than atmospheric pressure, then this one will fall below. But if atmospheric pressure is greater than it, then definitely this will be pushed above the constant volume gas mark. Now, that is why in the mode of operation, we mention that you adjust this by either raising it or lowering it. Under what conditions are we most likely to raise it? We are most likely to raise it if the mercury in this limb rose above the constant volume mark. That means that raising it will be lowering the mercury level this side and then bringing it to the constant volume mark. When do we, when do we expect to uh, lower it? We expect to lower it if the mercury in this limb fell below the constant volume mark, which means that lowering it will be now increasing the pressure felt at this point, such that pushing the mercury up here and then bringing it to the constant volume mark. I really hope that uh, members out there have uh, understood me on that part, because that's a very important part uh, during the mode of operation of this. In case you're wondering, why are we studying this? These are the other types of thermometers which are being used in places where the common thermometer to us cannot be used. Because for us, we, we think that there's only one type of thermometer, the clinical type. And the clinical type, by the way, I should mention, is the liquid in glass, which has been modernized to now even have a digital scale. But there are places where that will not work, and we need to use such type of thermometer. And indeed, I want to mention its advantages and then also the disadvantages. So, I started with an ice water mixture. Now, I mentioned in my procedure that we are going to record uh, the difference in the height levels as H0. What is the difference in the height level that I was talking about? The difference between the mercury at this point and then also the mercury at that point. That is the reading which I will come here and I will take as H. So if the bulb is in an ice water mixture, that one I want to record as uh, Uh, we are recording 
H0. Now, I'm going to now remove the ice water mixture and then immerse the bulb into steam at 100 degrees C. When I immerse the bulb into steam at 100 degrees C, I'm going to repeat the same procedure. Which procedure? Allowing time for the gas to be at the same temperature as the steam. And then number two, adjusting the rubber tubing such that the mercury in this limb is brought to the constant volume mark. Number three, I will then record the height difference as H100. In the presence of steam, uh, we are recording the height as H100. Uh, my producer is going to bring back uh, the notes so that people can uh, write them down. But here, let me first explain what we're going to find in the notes. Then after that, we are going to immerse the bulb in the liquid or surround it with a substance whose temperature is to be determined. We shall again go through the same process by allowing for time for the gas inside here to be at the temperature of the substance or of the liquid, in fact, that unknown temperature. And then uh, we shall again adjust the rubber tubing so that this one comes uh, to this point in the left limb. Now, this time, that height I'm going to record as H theta. The substance of unknown temperature, uh, comma, record H theta. Now, after establishing all of those, uh, the unknown temperature unknown temperature comma uh, theta will be defined as h theta minus h uh, minus h naught divided by h100 minus h naught and then multiplied with 100 degrees c so i want to my producer kindly uh, bring back the notes uh, so that now people can uh, understand what we've been doing you can see, step one, we must the bulb in ice water mixture. Time was allowed for the gas inside the bulb to come to the temperature of the bath. The open tube was then adjusted by either moving it upwards or downwards such that the level of the mercury in the closed tube reaches the reference mark. Now, in the notes, I'm using open tube and then also closed tube. But uh, in my statement, I mentioned that uh, adjusting it so that the mercury in the left limb because I told you this is a manometer of a kind, adjusting the mercury, uh, sorry, adjusting the rubber tube or the flexible tube so that the mercury in the left limb comes back to the constant volume mark. That is a marking point which we should never miss. Why? Because that is the reason why we call this the constant volume gas thermometer. We are establishing the pressure exerted by the gas of constant volume. Each time we adjust the rubber tubing and bring the battery in the left limb back to the reference mark, we are ensuring that the volume of the gas is kept constant. I mean, I'm only dealing with that volume from the reference mark up to the bottom of the bulb. I, I hope that my viewers out there, uh, you're clearly understanding this. Uh, because many of us I know are going to fail from explaining that part or mentioning that part in our procedures. And the moment you don't mention that, then you are off. So, uh, my producer, let's go to the next page. Uh, the difference, we are, we are then saying that uh, uh, the, dif the difference, uh, bring it down. Uh, the difference in the, mature level, in the levels of mercury, H0, is then measured uh, using the graduated scale. So I've talked about that difference, and I've showed it here on my diagram. Now, here they're saying that if P0 or P0, 0 is the subscript, 
is the pressure at the ice point, then that pressure will be defined as H0 uh, plus or minus capital H. Capital H is atmospheric pressure. Now, I'm going to explain that part. Uh, the bulb is then transferred to the steam bath under standard atmospheric pressure. Procedure is repeated, a difference in the levels of mercury H100 is noted. Then the bulb is transferred to a bath of temperature theta, and the procedure is again repeated, and then finally, here I deduce that theta will be P theta minus P0 uh, divided by P100 minus P0 uh, times 100 degrees C. Now, uh, let, let's come back to the studio. Uh, this is what we're having. Why is it that I've, I've come to this deduction? Remember, I've said that the traditional thermometric property here is the pressure exerted by the gas of constant volume. Because I said that each time I adjust and I bring this mercury back to this level, then I'm dealing particularly with this volume of the gas. Now, at zero degrees C, at the ice point, at the pressure was... Uh, P0 is uh, capital H uh, plus or minus H0. Why? Because I mentioned that either the gas pressure will be greater than the atmospheric pressure or the atmospheric pressure will be greater than the gas pressure, which means that uh, this value can be less than H or greater than H. That's why I'm putting a plus or minus. Uh, of course, in my notes, I straight away took uh, uh, H plus, but now I want to explain it for those who are going to find, uh, to use the different avenues, because some reference books will be talking of this. Me, in the notes, I use plus. Why? Because it is true that at ice point, uh, usually, if I'm dealing with air as the gas inside here, then the pressure exerted by this will be less than, that uh, it will be less than the atmospheric pressure, or it will be greater than the atmospheric pressure if, if what you're having is plus. But let us generalize it. Then, at steam point, how do we, by the way, how do I arrive at uh, plus or minus? Let me take you back very fast to the O-level physics of pressure. We know that the pressure of the gas is what is being exerted at this point. But according to the According to the properties of pressure in liquids, we know that the pressure in a liquid is the same at the same level, which means that if the mercury at this point is experiencing the gas pressure, then it means that if I cross to the left limb and I establish the same point, I mean a point which is at the same line with this, again the pressure exerted at this point will be equal to this. But following this liquid column, the mercury column H, the pressure at this point will be the atmospheric pressure plus the pressure due to this mercury index. So it will be P equals H plus small h. Of course, these ones are representing pressures in uh, cent uh, centimeters or uh, millimeters of mercury. So that's why I'm doing this. I hope that people remember this. Uh, from all level because we talk about it. So at steam point, again, uh, I'll either have uh, H100. Uh, wh wh when will it be minus? Let me also talk about when it will be minus. There are times during the experiment, uh, I've talked about only when it is plus, uh, real quick. There are times when this height will not be above this point. It may be below. Which point is that? Such a point, such a scenario whereby now this height that we are taking, the height difference is instead this value, small h. So here, the pressure exerted at this point is the atmospheric pressure. But then, at this point is the gas pressure. Now what does this mean? This means that this time, the atmospheric pressure h is equal to the gas pressure plus the pressure due to that height index h of the mature column, which is above this point. I really hope that my viewers out there are following me and they are trying to relate this uh, using the knowledge that we acquire in uh, Form 1, Form 2 physics. 
uh, because it is very important. It is what I'm applying now. So the gas pressure now will eventually be the value capital H minus small h. So these are the two scenarios. It is not always a must that the gas pressure will be greater than the atmospheric pressure. Sometimes the pressure exerted by the gas may be less than the atmospheric pressure. And I've showed you that scenario and how it will look like uh, during the experiment. We shall have the mercury in the right limb falling below the constant volume mark. If the gas pressure is greater than the atmospheric pressure, we shall have the mercury in the right limb rising above the constant volume mark in this limb. So that's why I'm saying plus or minus. So P100 will be H uh, plus or minus H100. And then at the unknown temperature, uh, similarly, uh, P theta uh, will be H uh, plus or minus H theta. So when we go to the other property that theta is uh, P theta uh, minus P naught uh, divided by uh, P100 minus uh, P naught uh, then times 100, you're going to discover that all of these pressures will have a common term, atmospheric pressure, which will cancel out at some point. So, because this atmospheric pressure, will, because you can imagine half H plus or minus H theta, uh, minus H uh, plus or minus H naught, uh, divided by H plus or minus H100, uh, minus capital H plus or minus H naught, and then multiplied with 100. Uh, there is a common term, capital H up and down, and we are subtracting. If I'm to open this bracket, this capital H will cancel out, and then I'll go back to this. Similarly, if I open the brackets in the denominator here, the capital H will cancel out, and then again, it will take me back to this. So that's why, in my conclusion, as far as the mode of operation of this is concerned, I am using uh, the definition for the unknown temperature involving only the height differences. I'm ignoring the, the, uh, the definition of pressure since it will contain atmospheric pressure, capital H, which will again cancel out. So I'm, I'm just using these heights. Of course, I mentioned that these heights will be a representation of pressures in centimeters of mercury or millimeters of mercury. But again, when I go into that conversion of uh, multiplying with uh, density of mercury and then acceleration due to gravity, I will, be, I will have multiplied it again here and again here and again. It will still also cancel out. Next week, I want to do a calculation on this. Uh, because of time, allow me stop here for today. But I really hope that uh, the senior fives are following me because I know that uh, the form sixes, uh, for you, by now you have already done this topic. But all the senior fives who are watching us, kindly inform your other friends who may not know that now what we are doing is also uh, beneficial to them. And I'm doing it from scratch. Otherwise, until next time, may the good Lord bless you and I sign out. Wangi jiba liku, okuteko kusente liru, mwenyoruga mtu kayo, olinye lifti, hobo kuteko mapesa ka kompita yoko mulimu, oinago kuteko mungalo, oba kusente.